Welcome to another Meeples and Milkshakes Board Game Cafe unboxing video. I'm Jim. Today we have a boatload of boxes to open from a bunch of different places. As always, special orders, restocks, and a bunch of new things. Before I start, the exciting news is that uh, BC's restart plan means that we are back open on weekdays. Uh, you can come in and play games and uh, enjoy food indoors instead of just takeout, which is really exciting. Uh, so come on in. Um, Tuesday through Sunday and we're open. Let's get right to the unboxing. Well that's interesting. Box in a box. Let's uh... first thing a very long awaited <clears throat> restock of Skull which is a really really fun uh, bar game. Uh, it is consistent of these really beautiful coasters and it's a push your luck game. You are, it's sort of a bluffing bidding push your luck game. It's very easy to play. Most of your, um, your bar, co your coasters are these uh, nice flowers, but then everybody has a skull one and you're taking turns putting coasters in stacks in front of you. On your turn, you're either putting one on your stack or you're saying, I can pick tile like coasters off of everybody else's stacks um, without drawing a skull somehow. Like you don't think people have played skulls for some reason. And you have to say how many you think you're gonna pick up. So I'm gonna pick up four. And then now there's a bidding round world. The next person says, well, yeah, well, I can pick up five. And the next person says, yeah, well, forget it. I'm not doing it. And the other says six. And it comes back to you and you're like, now go ahead, see if you can pick up six. And now they're on the hook for that. They have to start picking up coasters around the table. And if and um, they have to draw their own pile first, by the way. So if they put a skull in their own pile, well, that's foolish. Now they've maybe they've picked up two off their own pile and now they're picking up one at a time, however they want off the other people's piles, hopefully not drawing a skull tile. If they do, they've lost and they lose one of their coasters permanently. So they're now, they now have uh, less sort of ammo, so to speak, less things that they can pick up for free from their own pile before they have to draw other people's. But if you succeed, then you, uh, you get a point and it's the first person to get two points that wins. Basically almost taught you everything in the game. It's very, very fun. Um, we have played this so many times and it's always great that there's just a little bit of tension in there, lots of laughing and uh, every once in a while somebody goofs and puts a skull in their own pile because they really thought somebody was going to outbid them or whatever. They were just trying to drive up the price and they really didn't want to pull what they had to. I'm not saying that's ever happened to me. All three of these are already spoken for now that I think of it, unfortunately. So, um, that's right. So anyway, one day we'll get it again and then you'll be able to enjoy it. But we do have it in our library. So um, come on down and play Skull with your friends. It is amazingly fun. All right, let's keep going. Okay, well. Wow been waiting for this for a long time as well. Railroad Ink Challenge. This is the uh, yellow, shining yellow edition. Uh, Railroad Ink is a very, very fun uh, roll and write game. You roll the dice that have the different um, uh, road and rail segments on them, and then you're drawing them. You're trying to uh, connect your networks of uh, roads and rails to as many of the exits as you can and there's also some other objectives you're trying to complete along the way. These are the new ones, yellow and green. You'll see green is in that box and uh, this includes the expansions Canyon and Desert as well which are optional and then um, if you have the, so this plays four players but if you have the green edition as well you can play up to eight players which is pretty cool. So we'll have one of these in the library but also um, a bunch for you to take home. Now 
Now, as promised, here is the green edition that comes with the forest and trails expansions. Otherwise, very similar. So, there we go. Come on down and check out railroading. All right, first of all, let's see what's behind door number two. Yep. There we are. This is Volo's Guide to Monsters. We've recently sold out of this, so brought in another copy. Next up, we have a bunch of special orders. Um, Folklore The Affliction is a really neat um, uh, role-playing game, dice-based, uh, dungeon crawling, all kinds of things going on. I've actually played this uh, briefly. It's for one to five players, and it's actually really neat. Uh, it's quite, quite a big, long game. Like There's like lots of chapters in this game, uh, lots of uh, stories, and uh, looks very cool on the table as well. Uh, the art's really neat, and uh, the game is really neat as well. So somebody has ordered that and some of the expansions. This is the new, uh, I think this is the new one, Follow the Spire. And, uh, well, there's also, there's one other in another box, I guess, but there's also this uh, equipment pack as well. So that's all special ordered. Okay, let's keep going. So now we have Sheepy Time, which is a new push your luck game from AEG. Um, I have watched some videos on this a little while ago. It looks very fun. It's a family weight uh, push your luck game for, I think it's yeah, four players. It does include a solo mode as well. And it's all about uh, dreams and uh, dreams and nightmares and, and things like that. It, uh, it looks really cool. So if you want a very uh, straightforward uh, family push your luck game, then this, uh, this is a good one. That's cheapy time. Next up we have the Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion uh, removable sticker set and map. Uh, so it says here it contains uh, 30 vinyl non-transferring adhesive stickers for clean removal and a map board. It allows you to reset, replay, and resell. So if you have Jaws of the Lion and you don't want to mark it all up with the stickers that come with it uh, that are not easily removable or removable at all, then you can use one of these so that you can play Jaws the Lion over and over and over again, which is really cool. So, one of these is already spoken for from a pre-order on our website, meeples.ca, and the rest are gonna be available. Next up, we have another new one. This is Chronicles of Crime 1900. I believe this is a standalone. It uh, requires the free app to play, like all the Chronicles of Crime games do, but it is says it's ready to play out of the box. No additional material required. So yes, it is standalone. Um, cooperative game of crime investigation using scan and play technology to mix digital and board games it allows for many crime investigation stories to be told with the same components interrogate the suspects collect evidence and find the culprit before you run out of time this is new so I haven't played this but I have played Chronicles of Crime the original game and it's a lot of fun and the app is really 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 well done I definitely recommend this if you like these kind of crime slash mystery slash uh, uh, not really escape room, but escape room adjacent kind of game. So yeah, there you go. This one's been getting good reviews as well. Really good reviews. Next up, we have Betrayal Legacy. Uh, it's occurred to me that now that people are allowed to get together again, that these legacy games are probably going to be of interest again to people. So here it is. Betrayal Legacy is the legacy version of Betrayal at House on the Hill. That's about all there is to say about that. Um, it is designed by Rob Davow, so you know it's a good legacy game. He's kind of put the stamp on legacy games, right, with Pandemic Legacy and so many others. Uh, Betrayal House on the Hill is a very fun game. We have that in this uh, unboxing video coming up in a future box that we're going to be un unboxing a bunch of different Betrayal products. Um, but you are expanding this world of this haunted house and discovering what's going on and then eventually bad things happen and you have to deal with it. I don't want to do any more spoilers than that, but Betrayal is very, very fun. All right, as promised, have Scooby-Doo Betrayal at Mystery Mansion. This is a slightly simplified version of... Uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill, but using the uh, gang from Scooby-Doo. 
and it has 25 uh, different scenarios in it, so there's tons of replayability, and this is appropriate for ages eight and up, according to the rules, which I generally think means like six or seven, uh, but maybe for this game, because of the scariness, maybe eight would be more appropriate. Really depends on your children. But yeah, very cool. This is also in our library. And then a new one for us, this is Betrayal at House on the Hill, Widow's Walk ex and Expansion. So uh, this is neat because there's 50 new haunts in this and that means if you have Betrayal at House on the Hill then there's a whole bunch of new content and it's also very affordable. I don't remember the price off the top of my head but it's certainly less than the base game, that's for sure. And so that's really neat, that uh, is Widow's Walk. All right, so now comes some more special orders. We have Nevsky. This is a GMT game. I don't know anything about it, uh, but it's a special order. It says it's the first volume in the Levy and Campaign series. Yeah, something about the Baltic and 13th century uh, Teutons and Russian collision. I don't know, but it uh, looks pretty cool. GMT makes very, very heavy games, and this looks like a really cool one, but... Uh, Going to somebody who's picking it up today, actually. Nevsky. Then we have Anachrony, Fractures of Time, Expansion. I think there might... I can't remember if this is the one that we didn't get before that we were supposed to get, or this is just another copy of the one that we, were supposed, that we got before. Anyway, um, Anachrony Expansion is finally coming. This is another uh, special order, Magical Kitties Save the Day. Uh, this is the original uh, game. There's actually a Kickstarter going on right now for this, and the person, I think for expansions or whatever, but the person wanted to try the base game. So, very cute uh, cat-based role-playing game. Magical Kitty Save the Day. As promised, Betrayal at House on the Hill. This is the original, a strategy game by Bruce Glass, what am I saying? Glasgow, sorry, second edition. So, this is a two to six or one to six? Or does it say? Three to six, actually. Neither, three to six, which makes sense. Three to six uh, player game, uh, it takes about an hour. It is a lot of fun, we do have it in the library. Uh, I think the edition that we have is the older edition in the library, but uh, yeah, so you're moving around your little uh, miniature around and you might move it off there, which means you have to draw another tile to put on there. You can, there's three different floors. There's the main floor, basement, and the upper floor. And um, <clears throat> eventually at some point, there will be this, the haunt will occur. This event will occur. And then one of you around the table will turn into the betrayer. And it will be some, you have to read some description in the book of what's going on and then the, it's like a one versus many game instead of a cooperative game and you're trying to defeat the other team basically it's a lot of fun and there's like 42 I think there's 42 scenarios in here and so like I've played this game a lot but I have not seen all the scenarios so uh, definitely a lot of game in here it's a very good value next up we have uh, one of my favorite uh, roll well, it's not really a roll and write it's a flip and write game uh, in this game, you are flipping cards, which are different uh, terrain tiles, and then you are drawing them on your little map. You and everybody else around the table, this can play any number of players, as long as you have a player sheet and a pencil. Very, very fun game. You're just trying to optimize your score every round. There's four rounds every round. There's a different scoring rule in place, or two different scoring rules, actually. There's four scoring rules. So in the first round, these two are active in the second round these two are active in the third round these two are active in the fourth round these two are active hey that's impressive that i can do that with my fingers but hey cool that's how it works there's with the scoring rules and uh you're just trying to do the best map you can by filling in the stuff according to what's drawn on the cards and then also there's a bit of player interaction there's some monster cards and when a monster is drawn then you have to pass your map to person beside you one way or the other and then they draw the monster shape, the monster piece on your map, in which hopefully a very inconvenient place for you. And uh, then you have to deal with the monsters. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this this game is uh, uh, 
going to be played for many, many, many years by people who have enjoyed it because it's just that fun. Cartographers. And we have a little party game here called A Fake Artist Goes to New York. Comes with a bunch of colored pens and a pad of paper. And you have to draw something. There'll be a prompt that everybody but one person knows. You're, it's whoever decides what the prompt is, the word, will write it on everybody's little card. Except on one person's card, they write fake. And that person, they get that card, they know they're the fake artist. Nobody knows and nobody you knows because they're all shuffled who the fake artist is. You go around adding to this drawing that's this piece of paper is being passed around and you're drawing on it, trying to draw the word that everybody else knows. But if you're the fake artist and it comes to you, you have to try to guess what they're drawing at that point in time and try to add to the drawing in a meaningful way that won't give you up as the fake artist. It's a lot of fun and it plays like how many players to play up to? 10 players, so there's 10 different pens in here in this nice little box from Oink Games. And uh, yeah, we have it in the library as well. Definitely worth a try. Now we have a restock of Hanabi. It's been a while since we've had this in. Uh, and uh, one of these is special ordered. The other two are available. This is a really fun card game where you're trying to play cards into stacks in ascending order from one to five. And there's, I think, five different colors. Now the trick is, is that everybody has this hand of cards but the hand of cards is facing, the faces are facing outwards. You cannot see your own cards. Nobody can see their own cards. So on your turn, you're either playing cards, discarding cards, or giving a clue to somebody else about what cards they have in their hand so that they know what they should play or shouldn't play, or maybe they're free to discard. Um, so very, very fun, interesting, uh, logical deduction game. Uh, and it's really good at two players as well, but also it's great Honestly, it's great at all the supported player counts, which is two to five. I have played this countless times and will continue to play this as long as I can. I love Hanabi. And here is that fourth uh, uh, folklore, the affliction uh, item that was special ordered. This is the accessory pack. There we go. First up, we have another special order. This is 5211 Azul, has been requested by somebody. I have not played this, so I can't really say too much about it, but uh, there it is, back back for that person who asked for it. And then we also have the new, ooh, the new version of My First Carcassonne is finally back in stock. We've been waiting months to get it back in. Carcassonne is a very, very fun, uh, simple tile laying game, and this uh, My First version is even simpler. This is for ages four and up, it says. I tend to agree with the ages when they're specifically uh, designed for kids. So like I normally would say, take two years off, but I wouldn't play this with two year olds. So definitely a four plus game. Uh, but that said, very fun and simple. So yeah, we've got a couple of these in for the young ones. Then we have Bridges, Castles and Bazaars, which is an expansion for the, uh, the full version of Carcassonne. This is expansion eight. And you can see it comes with this cool bridge or comes bridges, I should say, and castles, of course, and bazaars. I mean, why else would it be called bridges, castles, and bazaars? Uh, so a bunch of new tiles and components for playing Carcassonne, just to add a little bit of variety to the game. We also have the princess and dragon here, and there might be one other. We also have the uh, Carcassonne big box still, um, which is awesome because it comes with Carcassonne and like 11 expansions, which is really cool. This game has been getting more popular, so we brought some more in. This is The Initiative. It's a cooperative game of story, strategy, and code breaking. You see it comes with this neat um, comic book type of book, uh, and you guys are going to be playing cooperatively to solve the riddle and uh, break the code. And uh, yeah, it is a very neat game. I love the art. I hope you do too. I, I just, every time I look at this, I just get all excited looking at the back of the box and thinking about playing it. So uh, this is one that's high on my list uh, when I can get a group together for a cooperative game. I can't wait to play The Initiative. And then this is a game that we have not had in a long time. Uh, this is Forgotten Waters and it is being recognized now as one of the best zoomable games. So if you are still not getting together uh, with people, which is uh, obviously a totally reasonable thing to do still, uh, depending on your situation. This is a game that's a big, beefy game. It's a 
I think this is cooperative as well. It's been like a year since this came out, so I don't fully remember everything about it. I think this is, maybe not. Okay, anyway, this game is zoomable, which means that it's possible for one person to have the game and everybody else to play remotely. Uh, it's not exactly marketed that way, but it's being recognized for that. Uh, it was nominated um, for a Golden Geek Award for Best Zoomable Game. So I uh, thought, hey, you know what? It's been a while since we've had this. We sold out the first time we had it, so let's bring some more in. Forgotten Waters. Here we have the, uh, I believe this was the Spiel de Jahr nominated. Was it Spiel de Jahr nominated? I can't remember now. Zombie, Zombie Teens Evolution. I think it was, yeah, yeah. This was uh, Spiel de Jahr nominated, um, uh, which is game of the year. And uh, Zombie, Teen, Zombie Teens Evolution. So I think we were down to our last copy. So glad to get some more in of that. Got a bunch here, full case in fact. So come on down. This is a, a good game to play with your kids and it is a legacy game. Is it legacy or campaign? So in case you're curious what the difference is, uh, a legacy game is a campaign game that you can only play once uh, because you're gonna modify components in such a way that you can't replay it. And a campaign game is a game that lasts over many sessions, uh, but can be replayed G generally. And there are probably campaign games that are actually legacy games that predated the word legacy as a thing. But yeah, so this is, I believe, a legacy game. There's, it says, oh yeah, 14 mystery envelopes. So, you know, once you've opened these envelopes, the mysteries are kind of not so much mysteries anymore, right? Uh, so that's why it would be a legacy game for kids, which is very cool. Eight plus legacy game for kids, two to four players. Okay, so here we have a restock of Umbra Via. This is a two to four, that's right, two to four player tile laying game, path discovery game. You are uh, building this path and trying to collect these things if I remember correctly. Still haven't had a chance to play this one. Came out, I think a month ago or so. So we brought some more in and this is a very beautiful looking game by Connor Wake. Uh, come on down and uh, pick it up, Umbra Via. We have another uh, special order game, but we have some more to put on the shelf. This is Bear, Bears vs. Babies. Uh, this is an actual, maybe hard to sell, but an actual fuzzy uh, box. And it's a pretty funny game with uh, cards. It's a card game by the makers of um, Exploding Kittens. And uh, yeah, really cool art, and it's a pretty funny game. That's Bears vs. Babies. So we have a couple of those here as well for you to take home, as well as the copy that was special ordered. Next up is Nanga Parbat by Steve Finn. There are four um, Steve Finn games coming out in the next little bit. Two of them are coming in this shipment and two will come hopefully soonish. Uh, this one is called Nanga Parbat and it has been so long since I ordered these, I've forgotten how it works. But this is a two player game, it takes about 30 minutes. It says here, let's read this together. The Sherpa people known for their exquisite mountaineering skills use those skills to guide explorers on expeditions. In this game, you are a member of the Sherpa community building base camps on Nanga Parbat and trapping animals for food and clothing. Use your cunning and skill to climb to victory. So it's about a 30 minute game and the components look really cool and so does the art on the board. So there you go, Dr. Finn has another one, and then we're gonna see another one shortly that's from him, uh, Biblios, Quills and Parchment. Spoiler alert. I think this is it, Biblios, there it is. As I just said, Biblios, Quill and Parchment by Dr. Finn, Steve Finn. And this is a roll and write version of Biblios, it says, the life of a monastic scribe is not easy. Every day you spend long hours copying manuscripts, praying and performing chores. Through hard work, earn the abbot's trust and show your dedication to the pious life. Quick and fun roll and write game for one to four players. It says it takes about 40 minutes. And uh, I love roll and write games. 
and uh, custom dice like this are really neat too. So I look forward to the chance to play this one as well. Biblios, Quill and Parchment. Okay, so, yep, we have one copy of Red Rising. We ordered over a dozen copies of Red Rising and this is all we got. So uh, we're not in that, we're not alone in this though. Apparently most stores only got one. Uh, and then there's more coming out in a couple months or so. So um, we're gonna actually take this copy for ourselves and put it in our library because we want as many people as possible to be able to give it a try because we do have a lot of copies coming. And um, so there it is. This is the new card game you know, by Jamie Stegmeier and Alexander Schmidt and it is based on the Red Rising books. And I believe it's also based on the Fantasy Realms uh, mechanics. Uh, I don't know if it's like directly licensed or they just like openly ripped off the design. I don't remember. I just know that it's like very well known that it's based on Fantasy Realms, which also was nominated for Spiel der Jahr. Um, and we don't have any yet, sadly. Um, my, my mistake. But yeah, so here's Red Rising. It's the only copy we have. I apologize. There's nothing I could have done. I could, you know, probably shouldn't have even ordered as many copies as I did, but I really wanted to have a bunch and uh, still only got one copy. Uh, I'm gonna have to vary my ordering from different places in the future, so hopefully I can get more, uh, especially these new Stonemeyer games because they tend to have issues like this upon release. And next up is a game from a few years ago, Rennick Knizius Stevenson's Rocket. Uh, this one is a special order, but we have one copy left. This is the game of Railroad Investment and Expansion, and it's a Reiner Knizia game. Very, very neat looking game, and a friend of mine is super pumped that I was able to find a copy for him, and he's coming down today to pick it up. So there it is, Stevenson's Rocket. Huzzah! And then we have a restock of Rajas of the Ganges. This is a really, really fun uh, game for two to four players. I've played it a couple of times, but not nearly enough, in my opinion. There's lots going on in this game. There's dice uh, drafting, dice, well, not really drafting, dice selection, dice, dice placement, really, which is worker placement. The neat thing about this is there are two scoring tracks. Uh, I can't remember the names. One of them is Fame, and I can't remember the other one. But you are trying to, so one of them, goes around the board this way and one goes around the board this way. The game ends when somebody's um, two scoring things inter like cross somewhere on the board. Once that happens, the game is over. Um, so it's really up to you how much you focus on one type of points versus the other. Yeah, it's really neat. There's lots going on in this game. There's tile placement in your player board down here, uh, but there's paths to victory where you don't do a whole lot of that. There's lots of different ways to play this game. It's really, really, really fun. It says it's for ages 12 and up. That's probably about right. You might, if you have some clever 11 year olds, they could probably play this, but it's it's not a basic game. It's also not the hardest game ever. It's super good though. Really love it. The art is great. The components are great. Um, and uh, yeah, just a lot of fun. It's one of those games that, uh, you know, just fits right into people's collections. If they, there's all kinds of things. Uh, that you know people who like different types of games can find something in this game that they're gonna like so it's it's a great game for pretty much everybody this is Rajas of the Ganges okay so here we have a restock of Recreators the new game by Kids Table Board Game Board Gaming sorry and uh, they're out of Toronto and a uh, really neat looking game for one to five players. We've talked about this a few times recently. So uh, come on down and check this one out, Rec Raiders. And now we finally have a restock of Grass Birmingham, which is the um, remade version of Brass. Basically the first version was just called Brass, then Roxley remade it, and they called it the original Brass Lancashire, which we still have on the shelf a copy, and now we have Brass Birmingham, which is like the new, slightly different, slightly harder version of Brass, which is already a very hard game to begin with. Um, 
Very, very awesome art. Roxley, if they do anything right, they do art, great components. This is a Martin Wallace game, also with Matt Tolman and Gavin Brown involved. Um, I have not had the chance to play Birmingham yet, but I have played the original Brass, and it is an amazingly good game. Amazing game. Uh, this one, I think, if I remember correctly, might actually be in the top five on Board Game Geek right now, or at least the top ten. So that's pretty cool. This is for two to four players. The box says 60 to 120 minutes. Lies. This game is not playable in an hour, even if you know what you're doing. Lies. Pure lies. It's a long game, but it's well worth it. You will love this game. This is Brass Birmingham. First up, we have another special order. This is the Catan Dice Game. We actually have this in the library and somebody asked us to bring it in for them. And so the packaging is different. It came in a box before, but now it's uh, packaged like this. But uh, there it is. Somebody's gonna be taking this home this weekend. And then we have another copy of the uh, Bridges, Castles, and Bazaars expansion we talked about earlier. And another copy of My First Carcassonne, which we also talked about earlier. And more Animal Upon Animal, which we just sold out of. And I know there's somebody uh, who is uh, coming to Penticton shortly who is interested in a copy. So uh, I su did suggest that they just buy it on the website, but they said, oh, we'll just hope it's there when we get here. So hopefully it'll still be there when they get here and we won't be disappointing them, but we have two. So that ch doubles their chances of having a copy, I guess. There we go, animal upon animal. So this was nominated for, no, not a Spiel de Jahr, but this was nominated uh, for, maybe it won actually the uh, best, I think it won best cooperative game, I think, Golden Geek 2020 awards. This is Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, which is a prequel, of course, to uh, the other ones, Season One and Season Two. You do not have to have played Season One or Season Two. It's an independent game, as it says. This is a legacy game, so it means you can only play this once, but there are, I think, 12, if it follows the other Pandemic Legacy games, 12 to 24 sessions in this box, so tons of value uh, in here. You will be, um, this one is different in, in the setting. This is set in the past. This is in 1962, this one. And uh, Rob Davao and Matt Leacock. Uh, Matt Leacock is the designer of um, Pandemic. And then Rob Davao is like the legacy god, basically. Uh, makes all these great legacy games. And this one is uh, award winning now. And uh, happy to have this back in finally. So that's Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Now we recently sold out of Catan Starfare, so we brought in another copy of that. This is the big box three to four player space version of Catan. It says it takes two hours on the box, so that probably means three in real life. I don't know who can play these games as fast as the times they say on the boxes. It's all lies, lies, I don't know. Maybe I'm just slow. How can I, I don't know, maybe. But anyway, neat, neat game, Catan Starfarers. Uh, there is also a five to six player expansion. I guess I didn't order that back in for some reason, or maybe it's coming in a future shipment. Uh, but uh, yeah, that is also available. So like other Catan products, there's a five to six player extension if you want that, but you don't have to pay for it up front if you're not playing with big groups. So that's cool. Um, there it is, Catan Starfarers back on the shelf here. And then finally, Catan Seafarers. We've been sold out of this for a little while and uh, happy to have it back in. This is um, for some their favorite expansion of Catan and uh, there's even uh, there's other scenarios that are built for seafarers. Very neat uh, expansion. So if you're looking for seafarers now we have it again. Huzzah! Okay, first up we have Rajas the Ganges, Roll and Write the Dice Charmers. So we just talked a little bit about Rajas the Ganges, how much I love that game, it's so fun. And this is the Roll and Write version, which came out, I think, it was either early this year or late last year. Um, in any case, this is a restock of that uh, two to five player game that plays in 30 to 45 minutes. 
and uh, looks a lot of fun. If we don't have this in the library already, we're going to put it in the library. I was just poking my head over there looking. I can't remember if it is or not, uh, but I definitely want this in the library because these uh, roll and write games are a lot of fun uh, for people to try out. There we are. Next, we have a puzzle. This is a Gloomhaven puzzle. One of these is special ordered. It was pre-ordered on our, not special ordered, but pre-ordered on our website, meeples.ca. And the other ones are available. This is called the Black Barrow. Um, it says on the back of the box, your job was easy. Infiltrate the Black Barrow hideout and recover Jaxera's stolen scrolls. Little did you know that the crypts, crypts overflowing with bandits and living corpses were the least of the dangers that awaited you on your adventures through Gloomhaven. Revisit the world of Gloomhaven in this high quality thousand piece puzzle featuring brand new artwork based on the top selling board games from Cephalofair. There we are. So we have three of these left and if you are a Gloomhaven fan, you might like to make this and put it up on your wall. Uh, pro tip, well, we don't sell this uh, product, but I can tell you the best way that I have found to mount a puzzle, there's a store on Front Street called Dragon, uh, Dragon something, it's an art supply store, and they sell a uh, foam core that has a sticky back. And so what you do is you finish your puzzle and then you, you know, put a board on, hopefully you're doing your puzzle on a puzzle board like the ones that we sell, and then it's easy because then you just put another thing on top of it, flip it so it's upside down, and then you just take the adhesive back off the foam core and then you stick it on your puzzle and then boom, your puzzle is done. You don't have to deal with glue or, mo or hod Mod Podge or any of that stuff. Um, done. And it's so uh, easy. And so if you have a nice puzzle like this that you want to mount, uh, it's not something, we don't have suppliers that sell that stuff, but Dragon does. And um, they, they uh, hooked us up with some uh, and we have mounted one of our puzzles and we're going to put it up here at the cafe. And uh, so yeah, this might be something for you to do is to have some fun putting together this puzzle and then getting it uh, mounted and put on your wall. So if you are going to mount it like that, it'll end up being about like that thick when it's all done because there's the thickness of the puzzle and then the thickness of the board. So if you're thinking of framing it, you can your frame handle something that thick? You've got to think about that a little bit, but if you're not framing it, no problem. Otherwise, you might want a different solution for, uh, for framing a puzzle, but if you're not framing it, that's a really easy way to go. It's a cool looking puzzle and uh, maybe one that uh, I might want to do myself actually. So there we go, the Black Barrow. Okay, we have some more special orders here. We have these expansions for Draftosaurus. This is Aerial Show and Marina. Now, I have not played Draftosaurus yet, but I definitely, desperately want to. It looks a very fun game. And uh, we have two copies of each of these. One of these are special ordered, so the other ones are gonna be here. So if you have Draftosaurus, you want the expansions, you can come on down and get it. I, since I haven't played Draftosaurus yet, I don't know everything about it, I can't tell you too much, but these are some nice little expansions for those games person will be excited to have them in and then next up captain sonar this game is amazing and very unique it is a game you need eight players so you don't need eight players you can actually play it with fewer but ideally you're playing with eight so it might still be a little while before you're playing this with a full player count but it's getting closer to the time when you can finally play this with a full player count maybe you can play it outside with a full player count that'd be fun uh, but this is like Battleship 10.0. You have two teams of four. Each of them is running a different submarine that are underwater trying to hunt each other down and destroy each other. And each team has a captain, a radio operator, an engineer, and a first mate. And each person has a different role. It is so fun. It is so unique. Uh, you put up this partition uh, between you and the table so you can't see what the other team is doing and it requires a very careful ear and, uh, and um, really good teamwork in order to effectively um, outmaneuver your opponent. It is so fun. Uh, it is special when we have a game night and there's exactly eight players and you know some of them are going to be like itching like, is this 
is, are we gonna actually get to play Captain Sonar tonight because there's eight people exactly? Oh, I hope so. And uh, yeah, oh, so good. This is one of the things to look forward to coming out of the pandemic is being able to play Captain Sonar. It is amazing, love it. So, haven't had this in a while and uh, happy to get back in. And then lastly, we have Okanagan, Valley of the Lakes by Matigo. Uh, we were running low on this and we know it's a popular game in this part of the world for obvious reasons. And it's actually a good game. It's kind of like a beefier version of Carcassonne, honestly. Uh, and it's really awesome at four players. The maximum amount of contention uh, is available at four players. You are laying the tiles and trying to collect the resources that are available and uh, boy is it ever fun. Uh, we've played it a number of times and really, really like it. And we also have it in our library. Uh, and again, available to take home now from meeples.ca or here in store. That is it for our massive unboxing. So many new things, so many special orders. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, just again, a reminder that we are open again. Um, this week we were open uh, three to nine on weekdays, uh, except for Friday, we we're open until 10. Uh, tonight, this is Saturday morning, we're gonna be open until 10 tonight, opening at 11.30, tomorrow 11.30 to six. Next week is uh, likely gonna be the same hours due to continual, continual continued uh, staff availability issues coming out of the uh, circuit breaker restrictions and, and for other reasons. Uh, but then after that, uh, maybe we'll get back to opening at 11.30 on uh, weekdays, but we'll see how, uh, the, what um, the future holds. Um, any, in any case, thanks again for watching. Uh, please do tell your friends about uh, us because we were closed for about a month due to the circuit breaker and I think a lot of people have sort of forgotten that uh, we exist or something, uh, which is totally normal uh, because we were closed. So uh, people need to just know that we reopened again uh, that would be great if you could tell your friends. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks again for watching and look forward to seeing you here soon. Uh, stay safe and take care.